Hi there everyone, my name is Ryan from Avatar Aquatics and today I'll show you how I feed my baby angelfish. We'll be making Infusoria cultures in a safe and successful way so that you'll have something to feed these fry at their most crucial point, the first few days of free swimming. So stick around until the end, I have a nice surprise for you, so let's get started. Making a culture is very easy. I put some dirty aquarium water from a recent water change into a clear cup or jar, favoring the dirtiest brown siphon water, and add some fish food and leaves. Overall, you should allocate five to seven days for each culture to mature, with higher temperatures increasing the speed of maturation. As the organic matter decomposes, the bacteria multiply, making the water milky white like the cup on the left. This is not what we feed our fish, and adding this water in can potentially hurt your fish fry. We need to wait until the water clears up, when the paramecium that feeds on this bacterial bloom start multiplying themselves. Remember to let in some light during this time and also be mindful of the decomposing smell that the culture may give off. Once your culture clears up, like in this example, you're ready to feed your fish. All the floating dots are what we want, infusoria. In this case, a culture of paramecia, a genus of unicellular protists. To avoid the gross decaying leaf matter, I always like to use a syringe and needle to suck up the paramecium before feeding. As long as you have waited for your culture to mature before harvesting, you can inject the contents of the syringe directly into your fry tank. They will remain in the water column for quite some time, providing plenty of foraging opportunities for your fry. Let's focus on this cherry barb baby. Take a look as it absolutely devours the paramecium around it. The infusoria is a great food to feed the first few weeks for tetras, bettas, resboras, and other fish with babies on the smaller side. Afterwards, you can move the babies up to microworms or baby brine shrimp as you prefer, which gives them even more nutrients as they grow. You can also see my angelfish babies in this frame. They are the larger, bulkier swarm on the lower parts of the screen. Now here's a cool breeding tip. I like to keep cherry shrimp or other neocaridina colors in the same fry container so that as we feed the fish and then they have leftover food, the shrimp can go ahead and eat that up so it's not very, very messy. I don't see them ever chase the fry or ever try to take a nip out of a uh, fry, but they do like to go over and uh, pick on the eggs. So I would only put the fish and the shrimp together as the fry become free swimming and they're able to sort of get away from any curious shrimp. So this is what the infusoria or paramecium look like under the microscope at about 40 times magnification. Now, as I said before, these are single celled organisms. So uh, everything that they need to survive is packed into one cell. So unlike humans, we have brain cells, skin cells, muscle cells, but for these, there's one cell that they need. On the outside is something called cilia, which are these hair-like extensions that beat through the water in a very rhythmic pattern that allows them to sort of move around like you see here. In fact, you might actually remember them from high school biology. They're sort of the flagship of the ciliates, which are just organisms that use this sort of mechanism to swim around the water and look for other things to eat and hunt. Now, as I move in, you're going to see that large clump sort of get taken away. Now, we're going to be at about 100 magnification as I zoom in just a little bit more. And all those clumps and dots that you see are something called the yeast, which is a type of fungus. And even closer, if you take a look at these little lines going through the water, those little short lines are actually bacteria. Now, a lot of the bacteria actually move through the water with something called a flagella in another way, but for now, I just want you to see if you can spot them, because they're very, very small. 
Now, one of the last things that I want to talk about is how the paramecia manipulates the water around them to swim with their cilia. Now, you can't see the cilia right now because they're moving very, very fast, but you could see the water streaming around them or past them. And physicists have said that at this level of life or at this magnification, the water is actually a very thick, viscous fluid, almost like gelatin. And you can see that as the water moves past. So we're back at 40 times magnification. To illustrate the movement of the water, I've gone ahead and added a light blue dye. So take a look at the paramecium's movement and the water movement as it swims into the dye. See how it pushes the dye backwards to swim forward. You can take a look at this for a couple times, replay it. If you have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe so we can reach more people, guys. So I will see you next time. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching.